So if you're betting or trading on golf, it can be difficult to figure out who the winner is likely to be. Of course, you can see the leaderboard, but there are different players at different parts of the course at different times with different scores and different holes in front of them, difficult and easy parts of the course and so on. Uh, and what you need to do really is you need to see the player that is perhaps, you know, on part of his round that is making a big move and could potentially challenge for the title. And you're sort of thinking, well, how can you do that? Well, fortunately, there is a way that you can actually see who is playing well and where they're likely to end up on that leaderboard. And if you're interested in learning how to do that, then just watch the rest of this video. So like a lot of sports, uh, golf is very stats heavy now. Uh, you can get information about pretty much anything. In the old days, you just used to get the score and how windy it was and what the weather was like, and that was about it. You wouldn't get any other data. But now, as soon as the player steps up to that tee box and is ready to strike the ball, a whole load of information is being transmitted constantly about everything to do with that player's shot. Probably the most obvious way in which you can see this is when you see the tracers when they hit a drive off the tee. And the tracer will actually show you where the ball is going and where it's roughly going to land and stuff like that. But hidden behind that very simplistic graphic is absolutely tons of data. There's actually equipment behind uh, the player and at various points across the golf course where they're measuring every single aspect of everything that is happening. And as soon as that ball is hit, within a few seconds, they can actually tell roughly where that ball is going to land. And the longer the ball flight, the more and more accurate it is to understand where that ball is actually going to, to rest after that shot. But also, as the players are actually walking up towards their ball, you actually have people tracking them to mark various aspects about where the ball is on the course. And that means that all of that data is going back into a huge big central database. And it's possible to understand not only how the course is playing, but how an individual player is playing, but also how where that ball has landed has actually given them a, you know, an average score of how many shots it takes to actually get the ball onto the green and into the hole from that particular point on the course. And that data and that information is key to what I'm about to explain to you. So the earliest attempt that I had to do something clever when betting or trading on golf was to actually understand the course. And for example, when I look at Augusta, um, I understand the course really well there. And you may have seen me mention this in other videos where you're sort of saying which holes are the hardest or the easiest, but there's always another level that you can get to. And the level that I wanted to get to was to understand when that player has that tee shot, um, when they land, uh, is it a good or bad shot? And for good or bad, what I wanted to know was how many shots from there is it actually going to take to get the ball down on average? And when you look at the way a player plays a hole, you know, they obviously have to have a decent tee shot, which gives them a decent approach shot. And then hopefully if they can do a decent approach shot, uh, they've got a chance of maybe one putting and getting a birdie. But what I wanted to know was, you know, if the player takes this shot and lands to the left, is that different from if they land to the right or perhaps in the middle? And I started to sort of look at all of the data around individual courses. And I would sort of say, well, that's interesting because if he plays the ball slightly too far to the left, it's going to take on average an extra half a shot um, between there and actually getting the ball into the hole. Whereas if he plays it to the right, he gets a much better approach. And I was beginning to work along those lines. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, when you look at tour professionals and their caddies, they are actually uh, have access to this data, which tells them where they should be ideally trying to place the shot. Doesn't mean that they will always do that, but also, you know, they have to achieve that. And all of the other players have that. So there's an element of skill there in terms of actually placing that shot to give themselves a good approach and so on. Uh, but over the years, what's happened is as the quality of data has improved from each of these individual courses, it's actually been possible to understand and get more accurate data in terms of uh, wherever that ball lands, what chance have they got of actually getting it um, to the green and in that hole. So my approach was always to look at a golf course and to actually sort of say, well, if the ball lands here, this is uh, the chance that they've got. If the ball lands there, this is the chance that they've got. So irrespective of where the player is actually trying to play, I've actually got an idea of whether it was a good or bad shot based upon exactly where they've landed. And what's happened over the years is that this sort of data has begun to get integrated into the PGA Tour, not only for the players and the caddies, but for the general public like you and I. So it's actually possible 
uh, to get a variation of this data that gives us an indication as to how well a player is playing. So if you watch football, you're probably familiar with the stat called XG or expected goals. And the concept of this stat is it's telling you the chance of a player scoring from a certain uh, positional setup. The idea being that if you played this match 100 times, if you have an XG of um, 0.4, you would expect 40 goals out of 100 matches from this particular position. And if a player is exceeding that, then they're playing particularly well, they're doing better than average. And if they're below that, um, then their name is Darwin Nunes. <laughs> but, uh, but seriously, you know, it, it gives you a, a base measure on which to sort of say, well, they should have scored this amount of times, but they didn't, or they did. And it gives you a measure of relative outperformance given a certain scenario. And the interesting thing is such a metric exists for golf tournaments now. And that metric is called strokes gained. And if you look on the PGA Tour site, you can actually pick up on some of that information. So let's nip on over to the site and I'll just show you um, exactly how this metric is represented. So if you have a look at the PGA um, Tour site, uh, you can see the leaderboard for the latest um, tournaments and so on. But if you go to the stats section, you'll see it's got what you would sort of typically expect the scoring averages. Scotty Scheffler at the moment is scoring much better than anybody else. So he will be favorite. Rory McIlroy will be second favorite. Um, but the things that are interested in are strokes gained. So if you go to the strokes gains um, area, uh, you can also see there that Scotty Scheffler is doing pretty well, uh, which is why he tends to get installed as favorite. But remember, what we're interested in is what happens during the tournament. And during the tournament, you will get uh, the strokes gained statistics from each of the players on that particular tournament, not just in general. This is just showing you why Scotty Scheffler is the favourite at the moment. But you can also click on individual players as well, and um, that will actually give you uh, specific details on those players and how they're performing overall. Uh, but during the tournament, it will also show you how many strokes have been gained by each player for each different um, element of the game. So you generally get um, strokes off the tee, uh, then you get uh, the approach, and then in and around the green, and then obviously the putting, uh, which then adds up to a particular total. Uh, but this data will be available for you during a tournament. So the important thing about strokes gained is it's giving you information on how the player is playing relative to the field, because obviously you can't compare one tournament with one five years ago or last week, because all the courses and the weather conditions are going to be a little bit different. So what they're doing is all of this data that is being collected on course, they're measuring that and they're basically saying, you know, when this player tees off, how many strokes is it taking him to get it in to the hole or on his approach shot? Uh, how many strokes is it taking? Or when he's putting, how many strokes is it taking? And how does that compare to the rest of the field? And the advantage that you get with this statistic is that it actually allows you to understand a player's performance irrespective of what the leaderboard says. So you may have a player mid-division that is actually playing pretty well, but his score isn't being reflected in the leaderboard, but it probably will by the end of the day. So it's great for picking up on players that are at bigger prices who are likely to shorten as they begin to creep up that list towards uh, the top of the leaderboard, at least in to players who are contending for the lead. And when you see a player that is consistently getting uh, strokes uh, or gaining strokes over the course of that particular tournament, it may take a little while for the market to begin to realise that this player is coming into contention. It gives you a good measure of who's actually playing well, even if they're not near or at the top of the leaderboard. So, of course, the question is, how would you use strokes gained during a tournament? And this is what I've been working on for quite a few years now to try and understand the context of what this data means and how specifically you would use it when you're actually watching golf and you want to bet or trade on it. If a player is gaining a stroke per round, um, then that will be significant. That will lift their place sort of 10 uh, or more places up the leaderboard. And therefore you can see that that is significant. So a player who's consistently gaining strokes will end up there one way or another. If we're talking about a player that's gaining two strokes per round, then that gives them a decent chance of ending up in the top 10. You're probably looking somewhere between a 10 and 15% chance of finishing inside the top 10. And if they're gaining three strokes or more, uh, then about 50% of the time, if they're gaining three strokes or more per round, um, that will actually win them the whole thing outright. 
So just those little gains um, can add up to quite a bit over the course of uh, four rounds. So if you look at these statistics, that actually gives you an indication as to players that um, are going to be in contention at some point or another or get a top 10 finish or something similar to that. Now, the interesting thing is you can use it the other way around as well. So say that you've got a leader um, that is out in front uh, by a few strokes. Perhaps they've just had a few lucky shots. Perhaps they've been very lucky on the green, got a couple of really long putts that perhaps they shouldn't have. And, you know, maybe they've got away with a few things there. That, that lead is generally unsustainable. So they will begin to fall away as the tournament progresses. So you can use it the other way around, around as well. If you see somebody that's in the lead, but they're not gaining strokes, uh, from tee to green, then necessarily you could start to see um, their performance fade away and them slipping down the leaderboard. But also, you know, say you've got a player uh, that is not um, on the top part of the leaderboard, but they're actually gaining strokes. It could mean that they just, you know, they've been really unlucky with the putter. Maybe they, things just haven't quite gone their way or they haven't quite read the greens correctly. Um, but this would put them in a sort of a sleeper category, a potential challenger. Whereas if they've got a cold putter and then they begin to feel the greens a little bit more, you could see their score um, improve dramatically and then they'll surge into the leaderboard if just a few of those putts actually go in. So, yeah, it's important to get the context of how you would use uh, strokes gained. But that's typically the sort of way that I will do that. If you're interested in a little bit more detail, because I don't want to blind you with stats, I've actually written these up on a blog post. So have a read of that and you'll actually get a little bit of that detail and you'll be able to see it in black and white. But yeah, that's typically how you would use strokes gained. So this is the leaderboard in the first round of the Open at the moment. And we can see Phil Mickerson is up there um, along with a couple of other people that you'd recognise and some that perhaps you wouldn't. But we're more interested in how... Uh, did he get there? Um, and how is that going to influence his play going forward, which I will talk about in a second. Now, I saw him a little bit earlier uh, chip in from a bunker, and that is obviously uh, one of the reasons that he's up here. But the interesting thing is when we click on his name, what it will do is it will display where he is on the course, um, the shot that he's just made, where he is, and how far he has to the pin, which is brilliant information. Now, if we click on strokes gained, this will tell us how he achieved his score. And you can see if we look at um, the strokes gained on approach and off the tee, not particularly great, a bit average or below. But you can see that that chip in has flattered um, around the green and the putting. And this is much more variable and less important in the overall scheme of things. It's more important or more consistent, more predictive of a score if you get a good approach and off the tee strokes gained. Less important or more variable if you're achieving that with putting and around the green. A little bit more fluky, shall we say, um, in your game if you do that. So yeah, I would go against Mukherson at this point. So when I'm looking at betting and trading in golf, I'm looking at players' current form, I'm looking at the course, um, their tee times, the weather, all of these sort of things as well. But what strokes gained has done for me is it allows me to look a lot deeper underneath the sort of superficial scores that you see on the leaderboard. It tells you how well somebody is actually playing and whether they're likely to come into contention or whether the person at the top of the leaderboard has just been a little bit lucky and therefore they become an instant lay. If you can see that they're not really gaining that many strokes and perhaps all of the gains that they're making have been on the green, then you know, you'd be a little suspicious as to whether they can continue that over the course of four rounds or however many rounds are left. So yeah, strokes gained are a really important thing for me to look at now. And when I look at that leaderboard, I'm not looking at it from the perspective of who has the lowest score. I'm looking at it from the perspective of do they deserve that score? And are there players just underneath that are coming into contention? And you can easily spot that if you keep an eye on strokes gained.